you're still watching ways now we're going to go straight to ak ak what did you find for us in the news today okay so for me the news is taken from the nation and the caption goes breaking school schools resume january 18 says federal government so we have been you know it was proposed that schools will open on monday which is um will reopen on monday students will resume um back um and we're thinking that January 18th will be moved for obvious reasons. You know, there's a second strand, there is the rising of uh, COVID cases, positive cases. But the federal government has come to confirm after meeting with various stakeholders that, you know, schools will still go ahead to, to resumption will still happen. And you know why this story is particular to me, or I really pick interest in the story is because I have children and I also know the struggle. So you're in between the devil and the deep blue sea. You have to worry about COVID, but you also will have to worry about, you know, the sanity of your children. Apart from some children have been privileged to even say, um, let them do virtual learning. Some children have not been educated since March. Hmm. So it's really a struggle. And you know that during the onset of um, COVID, the government has proffered solutions. Okay, we're going to educate them via TV or yeah. radio. But it's not Which sustainable. And it's not been really happening as, as effective as I want. So there's really that struggle. And it's not an easy decision to take. So people say it's crazy. But then again, it's not as simple as it seems. Hmm. You get? So I, I, I don't know what to think about this. Because I'm... I really haven't taken a stand whether or not to let my children go back to physical school. So it's really dicey. And, and that's why I decided to share the story today. Well, my children will be all right. They'll be in school. <laughs> no, because even, I, even to, yes, today as I was coming, I stopped over to see a friend of mine. You know, the husband was just saying that I am really tired. Honestly speaking, these children have to go back to school. Well, everybody's tired. Yeah, because it, everybody, it, like... It's, you know, for, it, you, for, you, really, for you people really that drink. even have younger kids, it might be even easier to manage. Exactly. The older kids, come on. My children stay up till 5 a.m. playing Fortnite on play, PS, uh, PS. Like, it's, it is, you can't even control any, because you really, so they will tell you, what do you, what do you want me to do? I'm bored. Exactly. You can't take them out. You can't, you so they are home. So I think for me, you know, we, we'll just find a way. Like Lamy said, you remember the beginning of this lockdown? Lamy said that eventually it's going to be boiled down to head immunity. So you have to boost your, your immunity. immunity. That's your the immune truth. System. Because there's really nothing anybody can do at this mm -hmm. point. The children have to go back to school. And like you rightly said, some children have not even, they've not been taught since March last year. Exactly. Not like the they're ones that are even privileged to do virtual learning, you know? Some students have missed a whole year of school. Yes. Whole year. So it's actually a devil and a deep blue sea situation. But Isi, let's take your story. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> As an educator, I don't know what else to say. The key thing is that we want the kids back in school. But there, we, uh, I keep saying one thing. The private sector will do what they have to do. Mm. But the public sector is where we rarely have challenges. We can actually talk to the um, private sector and tell them, okay, we want our children to be in this particular environment. We want the classroom to look like this. We can even contribute to that, mm. um, to having that done. But in the, the government, in the schools, government yeah. owned schools is not possible. So mm. that's where we rarely have a challenge. And well, while others are opening, Obaseki has decided to impose a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew in Edo State. And he has also shipped school resumption to February 1st. This is to also check the spread of the COVID, the second wave of COVID. And mm. I, I, like I said, th this is something we will always face. Yes, about, um, the, pre the governor of Edo State bowed probably want a situation whereby he must have talked to the Ministry of the Minister um, Commission of Education and see what is obtainable in the public schools mm. in Edo State. But mm. we all know that the state of um, education in Edo State currently or the schools are not in good yeah. state. So that is, is also yeah, it's also something. Well, and we I also have the 10 p.m. curfew. curfew. Mm. And that is as a result of the past killings that have been happening in Edo State as well. So it's so essential that what he has done, I think I should commend him. It's applaudable. Him. You yes, know, so the thing is, I like that. the fact that he's moving his resumption to February 1st. Mm -hmm. And I will still repeat what I've said um, the day Mori took the story. I said it yesterday. I will still say it again mm -hmm. today. What is the criteria 
no, right? That you have said, okay, this is why I am moving this resumption. What are you putting in place? What is this? What what data is backing up this shifting of the resumption? Exactly. You must not just assume. Just move it forward, right? like yes, that. Yes. You you must you must back it up with data. You must mm -hmm. say that okay, this is an X Y Z that we have noticed, and we are hoping that by by February first, we would have put X Y Z in place, and so the resumption can happen. Not that's just that's being practical. I am yes. That's being practical. But what we have is an assumption, which is he is saying that is going to be based on whether the people of Edo State um, comply to the COVID well, protocol or So while we are on the uh, COVID matter, they, we should also realize that there's something really um, happening, looming, you know, which is hunger and so food security. Um, so FOA, or the FAO rather urges African countries to tackle um, climate change. So the Director General of Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has appealed uh, for an urgent scale up of African um, Africa's Great Green Wall Initiative to re to be restored um, to restore degraded land, right, and okay. create jobs and tackle climate change. You know, I mean, this year we are farmers. I mean, not this year. Sorry, 2020. Yeah. We really saw the effect of climate change on the farmlands. We mm -hmm. we barely had rains. You know, to be able to you know water the the farmlands. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going on while we are talking. Uh, complaining about COVID and everything, mm -hmm. we are also we should put um, in cognizance the um, what's it called the Effect. looming um, food security challenge that is coming, hunger and all of that. So African mm. leaders, I think this great great green wall initiative um, is a flagship um, initiative to combat climate change and desertification and address food um, insecurity it's and poverty. There was something that with the goal of okay. restoring a hundred million hectares by 2030. So this mm -hmm. is a fantastic initiative and I hope all the African leaders, you know, will come together and make this a reality. It, it this, was endorsed this, by the union in 2007. This, this brings to mind what happened when we were much younger as kids and then they would say plant a tree, mm. you know, and it also, it helps to, you know, suck in of whatever course, There are so many things atmosphere. that can be done so, to reduce the certification There is so all much that. we can so do. So I think it just takes um, will, um, the will for all our African leaders come together and, you know, fight this and, and combat And more enlightenment on the, on the hazard of um, climate change. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, do you have anything to contribute to my story or you just want us to move on? Yeah, no. So I was actually beckoning on you when um, Isi was talking um, about her story. Yeah, I wanted go ahead. to lend the voice to what she wanted, what she was sharing. Okay. Now, I don't know how coffee solves COVID or it's a solution to COVID. I don't know how that works. You get people are exposed during the day. So the most active time of the day is even the time that is left open. And the funny thing about schools not reopening is that the parents that are going out, not observing COVID laws, are coming back home to those children. So that's why I said it's really between the devil and the city. I don't think really that a restriction in movement of time, especially during the night when we're all supposed to sleep, yeah. will help us solve COVID. Absolutely. But then again, is the governor. It's just Let's doing the responsible thing. You just came back from a trip, right? Mm -hmm. You are self you are self isolating because you are a responsible citizen. You would have decided to come out to say you want to also join and just go about your business. So this COVID yes. issue is not so much of putting these stringent rules and regulations, it's more of personal responsibility. Responsible Everybody just enough. begin to care about the next person. Mm -hmm. Just care about the next person. That's all. When you start to put the next person first. I tell you, we'll fight this uh, problem quicker than even the and the faster. all the curfews and all of those exactly. restrictions that they have been put that have been put in you're place. You're totally right. Too, yeah, uh, you're totally right. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll be discussing copyright uh, in Nigeria. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>